me along and can I first of all welcome the fact that Green Journalism has produced a useful report um, and I think it's very important that you continue to articulate in a cohesive and coherent way um, the case for the bus. Um, I hope I do that and others do it inside government but it's important that there's also pressure from outside to achieve that and it's good that you've done this and I welcome the report you've brought forward. I think there is an understanding of how the bus impacts on job prospects and access to employment and there's also an understanding of the social and environmental benefits of the bus. You, you must take some credit for that as well in terms of the work that you've done. It doesn't make any sense to revert back to a situation in the 1970s and 1980s where the motorist is given free reign to squeeze out everybody else. And I think those who argue that case perhaps misunderstand the economic value of the bus, the economic value of the cycle, and the economic value of people on foot, who actually, when they're given a city centre which is attractive, will linger longer and spend more than they will do if they're forced out of uh, the area because of air pollution and fears about car movements. So, uh, onward and forward, I think. Buses are the lifeblood of the UK economy. There isn't a single area of our daily lives that doesn't in some way depend on buses, from employment to education, health, retail, leisure. In Bus 2020, we set out how the next government can harness the power of the bus to deliver greener growth, to help Britain's people get to work using a low carbon form of transport, and to help our young people access opportunities to train and learn. Let's all move forward together.